Hello and greetings to you all and welcome to Faith in an Ever-Changing World, Encouragement and Hope, Faith Story. I'm Janet Harley, your host. And today, it is my pleasure, I want you to meet Mark Sowersby. Mark is a speaker, writer, pastor, and you can read about his information in the post, but I do want to mention his ministry. Uh, he does have a ministry, and its mission is to help those who have experienced hurt, abuse, and pain, and for them to find freedom and peace through God's love and the many facets of forgiveness. Mark, thank you so much for being my guest today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Oh, you're so welcome. And it's my honor. And right after this short intro, we will hear Mark's powerful faith story. We'll be right back. And welcome back. And Mark, if you will, please share with us your faith story. Sure, I'd be honored to. What a blessing it is to be able to share with you my testimony, my faith story. Mm -hmm. My story, unfortunately, is like too many people. I grew up in a very broken and abused home. And from the ages of 7 to 14, I was horribly abused by a man that my mother would marry that was 20 years her younger. He would bring abuse. He would bring molestation. He would bring drugs and alcohol. He would bring all forms of abuse, emotional, sexual, physical, mental, all forms of abuse into our home. And I was the prime target from the ages of seven to 14. And every day, sometimes two, three times a day, my body was abused. Uh, he stabbed me. He burnt me. He sold me to others for them to have uh, their way with me. So uh, everyone has a nightmare. I wrote a book called Forgiving the Nightmare. And my nightmare was between seven and 14. I was horribly abused and how those years uh, shaped me and formed me and, and gave me a view of myself and others that I carried around for a very long, long time. Mm, goodness gracious. Now, how did you find Christ? How did you find Jesus? Well, a few years after the, the abuse ended, and it ended for a couple different reasons. First of all, I was getting bigger and older and more mature, and I think a right. pedophile does not find pleasure. I, I don't even like using that word, whatever that sick definition is, that they don't find it and as you mature. I got bigger in statue, so I started to fight my fight for defend myself, and then I found an adult in my life who became my defender. I found somebody who would protect me. So uh, about a year and a half after that event, after kind of the abuse ending in a physical way. Now, the abuse was still touching me emotionally and uh, still touching my mind. Oh, and a lot of yeah. But it ended in a physical way. Uh, a lifeguard, uh, a lifeguard at an apartment complex, this young lady. I was a teenage boy. And she was a teenage girl. And she invited me to church. Well, I was going to go anywhere. She invited me. And she picked me up with her boyfriend that night. And they took me to church. And going into a, on a youth group, it was the 80s. We all had mullets. It was the rule. Uh, you know, so there I, I found I found a community. I found faith. And I'll never forget one night somebody asking me if I want to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. Probably not realizing the depth of that question or even how big that question was. Of course, I wanted God and I cried out. And I made I said the prayer that we would come to know as the sinner's prayer. I would say, Lord, come into my life and forgive me my sins. And at about 15, 16 years old that summer, Christ became my Savior. Now, I, I wish I could say everything was perfect after that, yeah. but it wasn't. Yeah. I still had those right. seven years of abuse, and still the emotion and the physical and the spiritual part was still affecting everything I was doing. I was going to say emotionally. I mean, you just don't heal from that overnight. No, no. No, no. Well, tell us about your book. Because sure. I know in the book, you know, you talk about the, um, uh, and in your ministry here, the facets of forgiveness. Well, you know, I think that that to, to forgive is such a call of the Christian. Mm -hmm. I think all of us that love Jesus Christ, we know the scriptures that talk about forgive those who've trespassed against us. 
But when you've had so much trauma, and I know my trauma was abused, but there's so many other ways that people have a nightmare. Some I can't even imagine. Some of the trauma that people have, and they say forgive that. Forgive and forget, I think, is a is, is not a full statement. How could you ever forget that my body was was abused and burnt and right. pierced? And so I had to go through this process and a journey. Now, God was the core. God was the center, the foundation. But I had to do practical steps and how to get through that. Now, I went to church on Sunday. I claimed the scriptures. I confessed the word. I said the prayer. I even put a couple dollars in the plate, you know, <laughs> so I was ready for it to be all yeah. over with. But I had to go on this journey of learning to die to self and let God become greater. And it was ugly. It wasn't always easy. It wasn't always sweet hallelujah moments. It came with tears and sweat and, and wrestling with oneself. But I had to go on this journey. And in the book, I talk about those practical steps about having things in your life in order, you know, be able to kind of observe your life in a very sober way. So uh -huh. I got into God's word. I got into prayer. I didn't want religion. I would say to you, I'm the most least religious right. guy in the world. I wanted to know God. And in knowing God is where God began to heal me. And I had to learn the difference to, to what it meant to, uh, to forgive and say, you know what? I can still have a healthy boundary. Uh, forgiveness doesn't mean that I don't seek justice. Forgiveness doesn't mean that I, that I don't want to have uh, I don't I don't have to do Christmas morning with my abuser. You know, yeah. forgiveness can be something that's that's honest and true and beautiful, but at the same time protective and wonderful. Right, right. Now, um, now you have a ministry I mentioned earlier. Uh, which I think is just wonderful. So um, it, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, how long has uh, have you been doing the ministry? Uh, how do people get to be a part of it? Sure. You know, I am a pastor. I tell people I'm a pastor in my nine to five, but there is no nine to five <laughs> pastors. I pastor a church in, in Massachusetts. So I say Ka and Pac and I talk like that, right? I like the Red Sox. Come on, I, you can meet my daughter. So that's how I talk. But I'm a pastor in Massachusetts. But on on also, I am the, the director of the pastor of a ministry called Forgiving the Nightmare. And there's a couple ways that right now the origin of this ministry a couple ways you can connect with us. First of all, go to our website, forgivingthenightmare.com, mm -hmm. forgivingthenightmare.com. You'll find out more about me, see some videos, hear about what we're doing. Also, Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. I've tried to put uh, some connections there, Forgiving the Nightmare or Mark So uh -huh. But also, I've been able to speak. You know, I was just down in your neck of the woods not too long ago. I was down there in, right. in North and South Carolina. I learned how to say y'all. So it's great being down there. So I've been able to speak, but mostly I've been able to put in a book called Forgiving the Nightmare. You can find it on Amazon. You can get there through my website. But Forgiving the Nightmare is some of these practical steps that I took to become, to go on my journey. Now, Christ, again, was the leader, the center, the foundation, the all in all was built in faith. But there was still practical steps that I had to take. Uh, you know, sometimes I think the Lord says move a mountain, and a mountain can be so big for those of us that have been hurt in such a traumaful way. So sometimes the Lord had to teach me to move the pebble, the stone, the boulder, the hill, and then one day he would say, hey, Mark, let's go move that mountain. So you can find out more about that in my book or check out my website, Forgiving the Nightmare. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark, I have uh, put the in the comment section, I have put to the... Um, uh, your links there you. so Thank people can can go and look um now uh and we do have a comment here from octavia and uh she says oh no so apparently uh she heard about your your faith story a little while ago the powerful sure. yes your testimony sure. and uh blessings i'll declare um thank you but, um, Mark, thank you for turning, you know, how God can use our traumas and tragedies uh, to turn them into uh, powerful testimonies well, and to encourage amen. other people who have similar 
uh, backgrounds, you know, maybe upbringings or uh, something like that. It, it, it can certainly encourage others. And we thank you for uh, listening to that uh, Holy Spirit and for sharing that testimony and, and being able to be such an encouragement to other people. Well, thank you so much. You know, I think sometimes as the victim, uh, you know, your body heals, praise the Lord, but the mental, yeah. the social, the spiritual, that takes a journey. And David said, I have to walk mm -hmm. through the valley. And I think sometimes we've got to walk through those situations Absolutely. and allow the places to be healed. And God can do it. It's not easy. You ask hard questions. God sometimes gives you hard answers. Yep. But I know that uh, when I, Paul said, no longer I liveth, but Jesus Christ that liveth in me. And I try to to live in that promise. Lord, lead me and guide me. All yes. day I have good days. I have bad days. I have yep. victory and I have valleys. But I know that God is, can bring the victory and go through the process. And it's not easy. It's, no. it's, you know, but God will help you carry that cross. I know he will. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one more thing I want to ask you, Mark, before we leave. Uh, what is one thing we can do to hold on to our faith in this ever-changing world we live in? Well, that's a huge question. I could preach a sermon on that, but I'll say, <laughs> the, the simple answer is, and it's not simple way to do it, but the truth sets us free. So when we stay and abide in Christ, we are in our word. We're reading the word. We're applying the word. We're standing on it. Not what yes. some told us about it or some podcast or some radio. or some, When we're in the word of God, the word of God begins to transform us. And again, it doesn't happen in an instant. It takes time. But the easiest answer is the word of God. The hardest thing to do is be in the word of God. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, Mark. And uh, so I, I, that is truth. That is truth. And that's uh, and, and the word of God is truth. So we need to, to be in it and stand on it uh, every day. Mark, thank you again for sharing your powerful testimony, your faith story with us today. And uh, we're just going to pray for you that you will continue to have opportunities, that the Lord will open up all the opportunities. If you would like to uh, have Mark come and speak to your group or your church, uh, please go to his website. I'm sure that uh, you can contact him through his website and he would love to come and share uh, more with you. Thank you all for watching and thank you to my network family on Creative Motion Network, a great group uh, of folks that uh, a network that's on Roku TV. So if you have Roku TV, tune in and uh, uh, watch there as well. Have faith and look up, friends, where our help comes from. Bye. God bless. God bless.